Hey everyone, welcome to the first ones to die. I am one of your hosts, Jonathan. I'm here with Alex and Jerome. Jerome, how are you doing today? I'm good, chilling. Nice. Alex, how about you? I'm good. Got my mom in town, so that's been fun. Nice. Yes. Um, yeah, we like chatted for like an hour and 15 minutes beforehand. So this is the reason why we don't have the chitty chatty um in a lot of the episodes beforehand because we've gotten that out of the way we like to get to the meat and potatoes of the episode okay starting this episode the first one we've ever gotten straight to the meat and potatoes of of what we're talking about i love meat and potatoes i do too it's just a nice simple thing yes you know who also loves meat and potatoes wanda maybe not vision because he can't really eat but wanda vision that was an amazing transition. I know. Don't applaud. Hold your applause, please. Um, WandaVision, it's on Disney Plus, and we watched it. We hope you all did. It's been talked about. It's been buzzed about. IMDb describes it as it blends the style of classic sitcoms with the MCU in which Wanda Maximoff and Vision, two superpowered beings living their ideal suburban lives, begin to suspect that everything is not as it seems. It stars Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, Catherine Hahn, Tiana Paris, among many, many other people. And spoiler alert, but I had a good time. I had a good time watching it. How this is going to go, the first section. Why is that? Oh, I was like, why is that a spoiler alert? That you had a good time? It's a, it's a, um, spoiler alert of my, my own review of the, of the show. Um, we're going to, for the first section, we're going to, um, talk about it in non-spoiler terms, non-spoiler territory, and then we're going to dive deep into the spoilers, dissect every single aspect of the show, hopefully within an hour. So, who should I start with first? I'll start, I think I started with Alex last time. Let me start Start with with you. Start with yourself, Jonathan. We never start with you. Let's hear your thoughts since you already had such a good time since I already gave the audience my, my point of view. Um, yes. So I binged unlike a lot of people who I know watched week to week. And I know that's how the Jerome, he just raised his hand. I I know that's how the, um, show was set up and it was, you know, set up, I'm assuming intentionally because like, you know, back in the day when you would watch a sitcom, sitcoms are typically week to week. And that's how this was. But I, I uh, put on my binging pants and uh, I binged it uh, last night, most of it last night. And I really enjoyed it, especially the like second half of the uh, series. Um, I think this is how you do um, cross genre and genre bending. This is how you like take a concept and put it into another genre and make it fresher. Um, I am famous, infamous, whatever, for saying that um, some of these superhero shows and movies blend together in my mind because I'm like, okay, I know what's going to happen. You're going to have the villain who's going to want this item from the hero. The superhero is going to protect it. They're going to win in the end. This was, I felt, I felt like I got more, um, more layers out of this. Uh, And I felt like the timing was perfect. Um, I'll get into it later, but I loved all of the sitcom tropes that, that were brought into the series. And uh, overall, I had a good time. I thought it was going slow uh, at first, but then it, it, it sped up and it, it gave me some, 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 some good stuff and good action. Also, I'm officially a Paul Bettany stan. Um, I just thought he was <laughs> he was great. And I thought, I like how this series focused on two of the, you know, like, I feel like maybe lesser appreciated characters in um, the Avengers and that you have Wanda and Vision. Um, they're not like the Chris's or even like, I don't know, uh, Scarlett Johansson or mm-hmm. whoever, or like an Anthony Mackie who, uh, who 
are kind of more in the background at times. And uh, I felt like this gave them the proper platform to be appreciated. Um, but enough of my rambling. Uh, Jerome, what did you think about this series? Uh, I have a lot of things to say. Uh, <laughs> not, 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 not bad, just because I'm a comic book fan. So there's a lot of things I think they did right in this show. Um, a lot of references that were really cool to see pop up and stuff. Uh, we'll get into more of it in the spoilers. Um, so I thought that was really cool that they're still like pulling from a lot of the comic continuity. Um, I loved all the acting. I think everyone did an amazing job. Uh, it was good to see new characters pop up like Tiana Paris, who plays Monica Rambeau and stuff. Uh, but of course the standouts are Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany as Vision. And they work so well together. I mean, they worked well together in the movies, but they spend not a lot of time together because they're not the main characters. So you don't really get to see that. This was a chance for them to uh, show off not only their talent, but also their chemistry and how well they work together. And they're amazing together. They're fantastic. So I, I loved um, their uh, chemistry on the show. Um, I think the sitcom element was cool. However, um, I watched this week to week. So the first thing they released in the first week was the first two episodes. And so I liked the sitcom element, but because I know that there was, you know, they were, they were trying to kind of sew in this mystery, it didn't really hook me because I felt like I was just watching a sitcom and then they kept the mystery elements kind of like really light in the first two episodes. Um, but then that third episode comes in and that's when like the mystery starts to kick in and you really start to get a sense that everything is not as it seems. And so that, that's when the show kind of picked up for me going forward now that being said there is one element of the show i feel like they did not dive into enough uh me personally but um as far as wanda as a character i feel like they did an amazing job fleshing out that character in a way that the movies never have um talking about her uh uh the things that she she's gone through as a character in all the movies combined up until this point and so I thought that was really cool. And the whole time I was watching it, I was like, this is where I feel Black Widow should belong. Not because like, like, because I think Black Widow is, 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 is a cool character. I know I've always been not against the Black Widow movie, but it's only because I felt like a movie is like this epic thing. So you got to have like an epic character who really can carry their own movie. Like they have their own villains. They have like these epic powers, like there are people that are larger than life. And Black Widow is supposed to be like the every person in the Avengers. But with these shows, I think WandaVision is showing like, hey, give us a platform where we can have a high budget. We can do some big stuff, but not as big as, you know, maybe an Avengers movie. But we could do it big enough where it could still be epic. It could still be awesome, still be a part of the universe. And we can just dive into a character and really flesh them out a little bit more. So the next time you do see them in a movie, you'll be like, oh man, I know all about this character. I know their whole backstory. I know more about them. I feel like I know this person. So overall, I liked it, but I do have some things to say. We'll get into that in the spoilers. Yes, and how about you, Alex? Uh, I kind of feel the same way with the first two episodes. I think they could have allowed a little more of that like, glint of like what was going on that it was really just something with Wanda trying not to give too many spoilers way in the way I'm thinking um I enjoyed it I found it entertaining it was nice little episodes to watch um like during my lunch break and stuff like that um I love that they inserted little commercials into the actual show <laughs> that had the vibe of like the sitcom styles that were going on so that was fun um it was really well done the way they incorporated uh, different Marvel characters who were fan favorites, like Jimmy Woo. Everybody loves him, and he was able to be on there uh, without making it feel like it was really forced. Because I've seen shows with a lot of the DC programs, you know, although I really love them, they felt like they kind of just had to have the character in there in the moment. And even like with Marvel movies, they'll do that to, sometimes. They want the character that was connected to this character to be in the movie and they'll find a way, some ploy somehow to get them in there. And it doesn't feel natural or authentic. It just feels like, oh, you had to show this character. 
because they're in some way such a big connection. So it's kind of nice to have these like fan favorite characters placed in there, but not um, draining of their actual characters and why we've ended up falling in love with them. So it's a nice way to see that. I think they did things really well. I'm not entirely fan of the ending because in a way it kind of made Wanda the villain if you think about it in a certain way, but at the same time, yeah, again, try not to do spoilers. Same time, you can understand why she did what she did. Have a signal, like. Yeah. <laughs> well, the way before I even started watching the show, my sister had asked me, like, "Oh, like, what's the show about?" I'm like, "Oh," and I explained to her it's about this one. And she's like, "Well, what, what's it about?" I'm like, "Oh, I haven't started watching it yet." But from what I gather, it's a mentally unstable witch who goes into the reality of TV instead of dealing with her actual problems in real life. <laughs> um, like, as many of us do with mental issues. So I kind of got it. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to envision yourself in these, these old sitcoms where the wor- only thing you had to worry about was like some random price of milk skyrocketing to 50, 50 cents more. I don't know. I don't know of the worries of the people of those times. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was just a nice little show. And I like how, so one of the things that did kind of fail with like S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that, they tried to attach the movies too much to the show. This kind of felt like it could be its own separate thing. It didn't necessarily have to be tied with the Marvel movies. It could stand on its own feet and I think that's what helped it a lot it became really a story about Wanda and not her being part of the Avengers it was just about her and her dealing with the loss of her brother you know kind of having this feeling of abandonment the loss of vision and all that so I think that's what helped it a lot on its own is that it could stand on its own footing so I think it was good yeah yes um with that being said Let's dive into spoilers because I know there is a lot to be said. So this is your yeah. official spoiler warning. Hop off um, if you don't want to listen to spoilers. Also, by the way, um, be sure to connect with us, follow us, give us on First Ones to Die um, on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Also, uh, if you want, give us five stars, whatever you're listening to. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Okay, now let's get into the spoiler territory. Um, where should we start? I feel like Jerome, I, you've been chomping at the bit to get something out. So, so it's 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 a it thing. Would be Jerome, I, who wants to? I feel I feel like here's the thing. I wasn't sure what direction they were going to go with this show because Wanda in the comics is a mixed bag. She has been both hero and villain. There's been times where she there was a time where she killed the Avengers. There was a t- or rather tried to kill the Avengers, did successfully kill Hawkeye. There's another time where she uh, helped save the universe and she's worked with Doctor Strange doing magic stuff. So it's like Wanda's a- always all over the place. It's never really um, throughout Marvel history. Like she's been crazy with her powers. She's been OK. It all depends. So I wasn't sure for the show if they were if we were getting psycho Wanda, who's like gone mad with power or uh a wanda who's like sad or a wanda who is in control and something else is going like somebody else is pulling the string because that's kind of how they try to imply it in the first few episodes that somebody else is doing this to wanda um we later find out that it is wanda yeah i thought that too and a couple of the spoilers i had seen like on tiktok and the way things are presenting was that it made it seem like it was um agnes who did that because there are a couple parts where she brings up like oh you know things are kind of disintegrating around you and it's like wait are you did you put her in this box is this your fault yeah which the agatha harkness thing is cool because that is she is more or less the only other ca- like every you know like all uh comic book characters have like their supporting cast or villains or that like batman has the joker and alfred and robin and all these other people Scully Witch pretty much only has one person. Well, technically, I guess her family, but they can't do mutants, so Magneto's not going to pop up anytime soon because that's her father. But uh, Wait, Magneto is... In the comics, Magneto is her and Pietro's father. And she has a third sister named Polaris. Those like I think Pietro's the only one who's going to show up. Um, um, They could retcon 
some people are theorizing that because Marvel owns the X-Men now, that they might retcon that her parents aren't her real parents. They're her step parent. They're her like foster parents. And her like and maybe she was adopted as a baby and her real parents, her real dad will be Magneto, is how they'll try and like fix it. I thought um, it was a German doctor who like took care of her and her brother that dude gave them their powers in the movies um in the comics they're mutants pietro is fast because he's a mutant and scarlet witch's powers originally are considered to be mutant powers but then they later they're like well she's called scarlet witch she might as well have magic powers so then they retcon it to be magic instead of mutant power i like how in marvel marvel universe is an x-men they're always like look you're a mutant oh you know what i mean then you're a witch what well, I did like about WandaVision yeah. is that I, I did like that she, it gave us like her backstory, like um, yeah. for the most mm-hmm. part, like it didn't give us everything, but we were able to, it linked well, I thought, to what was going on in that, you know, it showed her as a kid with her brother, to, you know, towards the very end, uh, and then showed like, you know her family why she she loved watching sitcoms with her parents and her brother and everything and that's why um she created this sitcom world and uh like you were who was saying it earlier how um it it didn't necessarily this is like a standalone thing i agree with that yes i agree with that because you know as the person probably on this podcast with the least amount of Marvel knowledge. <laughs> I <laughs> admittedly, uh, I, I, I felt like there was not very many moments when I was, you know, questioning myself, questioning like what is going on oh, or like wondering, you were lost. yeah, yeah you wa- lost. wanting to get fill, Yeah. Wanting to fill in those, um, bu- uh, fill in those cracks. Except at the very end where we got the, you know, after credit scenes and there well, were- Well, that's, sorry. Sorry to Jonathan, I didn't mean to cut you off. That just ties into what I was, what I was thinking is that I'm not sure what they're trying to do with Wanda because, and this is where I think they dropped the ball is that yes, you learn her backstory, but when she has the moment to confront her grief, it's not her choice to do so. Agatha makes her confront her grief. For selfish reasons, because Agatha wants to know how she made the hex in the first place. But Agatha's like, nah, ain't no decision in this. You're going to go through your grief so I can see your memories and find out how you did this. And I feel like it would have been more powerful if Wanda came to that conclusion on her own. And on top of that, even after she confronts her grief and then Agatha frees the people from uh, Wanda's spell or whatever... She doesn't think she's done anything wrong. She's like, uh, when they're like, oh, you like get your nightmares. Like your agony is like weighing on us and it's been on our heads. And like, you've, you've essentially been torturing us for so this whole time. And she's like, no, I freed you. I'm like, freed them from what? The town, <laughs> they were running the town perfectly fine by themselves without you. Where were you freeing them from? Being in Westview, New Jersey? Like Wanda, you- I'm in New Jersey you know. these, I'm just saying like, I'm just saying, like, New you it's, it's our weird. New Jersey it's, fans. it's just weird. We got a Virginia fan. We got nobody in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> we do have someone in New York, though. Um, I love it then. It's, it's weird that it's weird. It, I don't know. That's why I'm saying, like, I think they dropped the ball on that a little bit. I well, feel no, like I they would have. I can totally see what she means by that, honestly, because it's the whole what did we all really want as like kids? And like, Jonathan, you watched that a lot when you were younger, the full house. Moesha, um, Saved by the Bell, all that stuff. We all wanted to be those characters, but eventually you grow out of it. And she didn't get to grow out of that due to her trauma and everything she went through. So having that idea that I still want to live in the sitcom world, kind of that everything's perfect. And by the end of the episode, everything is resolved. So it's kind of a way of saying she saved them or she, in her head, she thought it. They didn't think it because, you know, they were being forced to play these roles. She thought it that way because they didn't have to worry about anything. I mean, they didn't have to worry about, like, what was going to have for dinner. You always ate pot roast at the end of those episodes. And, like, the worst thing your kid could get into trouble at school with was, like, what, lying and cheating on a test. I just, I just feel like this show 
want they want to put Wanda in a place where she's going to be the Scarlet Witch that we've known in the comics so they can do some of the big stuff with her. Um, one of the biggest plot points that people want to see now that they have the X-Men see her do is the House of M story in which Wanda erases mutants from the face of the planet. Um, so there's no more mutants. Um, except for like the ones you like, you know, Wolverine, uh, Professor Well, he's X, not, right? not a mutant. Well, what I'm saying is, is people like to, to get to that point, Wanda's evil at that in that story. Yeah. So they want to, I'm thinking they're trying to position Wanda in a place where she is that Wanda. But the issue is, is that they still also want to make her a good guy. And so they can't have their cake and eat it too. And the imbalance feels Almost weird. Almost like an anti-hero? I don't I, know. Okay, because, so this, because here's the thing. I like my argument is for this whole thing, because I did think about that, was I don't think she's an anti-hero because she, well, I think she does skirt the line of villain because she doesn't think she's done anything wrong. And she gets off pretty easy considering that she enslaved people. And I'm sorry, but if we're going to give Thomas Jefferson a hard time, the person who helped make this country because he still had slaves, I'm not going to give Wanda a pass who did everything she, who, whose justification is, okay. I was grieving. Where First did Thomas all, Jefferson come into this conversation? Because everyone is like, because everybody, I've seen all these people on Twitter be like, well, Wanda was grieving. I'm like, and that justifies slavery? Because that's all these people were, were slaves. They were unable to leave. If they tried to leave, basically, you're probably getting more mental anguish and pain for it. And if they were outside the outskirts of the city, they're basically subjected to doing menial tasks over and over again until Wanda's nearby enough to get their her Wi-Fi signal to have lines. Her so Wi-Fi they're, signal. So they're basically slaves. And if you can justify her having slaves because she's sad, you then you should. I don't want to hear anybody talk about any other slave master in real life ever again. So this was going to be one of my questions. Was <laughs> and we're kind of along this line. Do you think Wanda is more of a hero or a villain in this particular instance? I don't think she's a villain. I think she's a person. Or uh, sorry, I don't think she's a hero in this instance, or even necessarily a villain. I think she's doing villainous things. Yeah. So I can't I can't justify her actions by saying that she because she's grieving that it's okay. But at the same time I can't have empathy for what she's going through, especially considering the fact that we've seen her journey. We know what how things went in Lagos in Civil War when she blew up the Wakandan embassy. We know how her parents died. We know how you Vision know died. Honestly, like get- I I blame Captain America and all this. <laughs> <laughs> because no 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 Iron Man was right he he grounded her by the way to like this palace of an estate where she could have anything she wanted she wasn't confined to a bedroom or anything like that she had the grounds to walk on pr- practice get more control and Captain America's like no she needs to be free enough she killed a bunch of people she clearly does not have See, the that's what control. I said but everyone was like but she but he didn't tell her that she needed to be I'm like how do you tell someone who's all powerful Hey, I need you to not do anything and be locked in your room for a few days. Doing that, she was staying in one place, and then Captain America threw a hissy fit, sent Hawkeye to get her, and caused so much more damage. Why? Because his his boyfriend was upset because he killed Tony's parents. <laughs> and that's the thing of Civil War. Iron Man wanted more regulation for themselves. Captain America wanted to do whatever he wanted and then was upset when they were going after his boyfriend. Right? <laughs> Threw a hissy fit, broke up the Avengers. The and funny thing. I think he just let out the powerful witch as a big distraction because that ended up becoming <laughs> everybody's focus. Where's this crazy, unstable teenager going? The funny thing is, this stands alone by itself. However, I think the issue is that it stands too alone. Because certain characters that they've established in the Marvel Universe would not just ignore this. One in particular. Oh, you'd have at least some of the Avengers come help well, with this situation. Well, one in particular would definitely show up, and that's Doctor Strange. His whole job is to find out if magical stuff like this is happening on the planet. And if it's irregular, he's going to go check it out. I'm surprised Strange doesn't show up with all this magical stuff going on. He doesn't appear. He doesn't come to be at least be like, oh, that's what's going down. All right, well, never mind. 
Y'all got this. And then he, nothing. Doctor Strange doesn't. Well, no, oh. isn't Wanda more powerful than Doctor Strange? Yes, but she don't know that yet. And neither does Strange. He doesn't even know that Scarlet Witch is around. As far as he knows, the last time he saw Wanda, like she was on that battlefield helping him fight Thanos. So he doesn't which, even know that she is the Scarlet Witch. He doesn't know this girl. So which, for him, he'd just be checking out the hex and be I like, I still haven't watched the end game. Oh, well. But it's fine. Well, it's, it's, been it's been years. It's been years. I get, I know who won, who died, everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which uh, one of the reasons why at the top of the episode I said um, I stand um, Paul Bettany is because I saw an interview before we did this podcast with him on Good Morning America, and they asked. They said, "Oh, is Doctor Strange going to make a cameo in the final episode?" And all these uh, questions that they were asking him about, like spoilers for the episodes, he was going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was literally answering them they, like that. They, yeah, they all. Well, it's, it's also but, because they they know that Doctor she's going to be in the next Doctor Strange movie too. That's why yeah, they did Doctor them. Strange to show up. And um, he also made it. He, he what? So one of the famous lines in episodes uh, eight or seven was, "What is grief if not love persevering?" And everybody, you know, was um, that's a great know, line. Loving that line. And he, he, he was laughing and he was saying that um, he saw a meme where somebody said that, what is beef if, if not cow persevering? And, he, and it, was, it just got me how, how like tickled he was because of that line. So anyway, wait, put over I, my forehead Paul Bettany Stan account. Okay, just go ahead and do it right I now. I think, wait, thing. hold on. Wait, go back to that sentiment. What? <laughs> what is beef but not cow persevering? Yeah, I guess what I guess beef, you know, if cow. Admittedly, Alex, purpose. it didn't make sense either. I thought it didn't make sense <laughs> either. My, but my, I, didn't, my I didn't get it either. But I love how much of a. I wanted to show it on the episode, but I was like, no, let's not get into that. But um, he got. If you if you have the time, just go watch this interview because he was like, I'll so, put it up on our Instagram because I okay. I gotta figure out what's going on there. But the cow's dead. He's not doing nothing. I. But well, you know what though? I will say this. While we're talking, while we're on Paul Bettany, he does a great job here, and thank God because Vision's a character, and I I don't have my I don't have the book, so unfortunately I don't have one of my one of my famous comic book cameos to show y'all. Nerd. Um, but if you haven't read it, a lot this story is also the suburban thing is mostly also based off of um a book called The Visions. That story it's a story where Vision uh, asked the government to build him a family. That's just like him. So he builds synthetic robot um, people for his family. He builds a wife and two kids. And it is a great story about the vision. It is interesting to see how their family dynamic is. Of course, it's awkward because they're robots (laughs) and trying to live a suburban life like they're normal, but they're not normal. Um, It's a great story if you haven't read it. It inspires a lot of this story. In fact, uh, Sparky, the dog in this story, th- he's in visions, uh, the visions. Um, but uh, I like the visions was the first story because I never really liked Vision in the comics. I always thought he was like, oh, he's just a robot dude, whatever. And he likes Scarlet Witch. Okay, cool. And um, that was the first story where I was like, oh man, you could do a lot with Vision if you do really well. And then he was in the movies and then they did nothing with Vision. <laughs> <laughs> for majority of the films except kill him everybody was just waiting they're like oh he has infinity stone in his head oh he's gonna die <laughs> like that everybody had that on their mind hence when, why all when they announced the, infinity hence, war yeah hence why <laughs> the chris's and the and the robert downey juniors <laughs> they get all the attention while wanda and vision are over here being like give us right. our own storyline so this show was a great i think it was a great showcase to show like nah paul bettany is not only a good actor he can do it all he can do comedy so, he can do the drama stuff he's really a- quick since you're the comic book nerd vision is a creation of like iron man right like iron man helped create him tony stark uh, in the movies, yes. In the comics, no. No. In the comics, he's just made by Ultron. So, but Ultron's made by Tony Stark. No. Well, in the again, movies. in the movies, in the comics, he's made by Hank Pym. Okay, because I was thinking, I'm like, well, technically, Ultron is like Tony Stark's son because he made him, <laughs> and then so is like Vision. So that does that make like Tony Stark? the father-in-law to wanda 
technically they say that Iron Man, that Vision in the movies, he's like part Jarvis, some of what Iron Man's programming, and some of Ultron's programming. So technically he's all three. So Jarvis and Iron Man had a baby. Um, <laughs> but also the thing is, with Vision real quick, it's that's not even the real Vision. Well, there's a new because... Vision, yeah. Which is funny because in the comics, there is a white Vision. And I never thought they'd ever do white vision. Wait, but isn't the white vision just the dead vision? No, in the comics, there's a point where vision is destroyed and he's rebuilt and he's all white, but he's just the same dude. He's just vision, but white now. Um, well, they so, have that moment where they're talking and they're like, yeah, we're both vision, but we're also both not vision. Remember when they're in the so air? So she's yeah. not even real with the real vision in the end. Well, it's good. Or during well, the end, vision. She, well, in the end, she's a, she's all alone once again. Right. My vision Naturally. flies off, and you don't know where he goes. So I'm curious what they're going to do with him. Like, if he's going to show up in the movies again, maybe he's going to show up in Doctor Strange 2. Maybe he just doesn't want to be a part of all maybe this. Maybe he won't be around at all. All I know is, what, like, the rumor, is, or not rumor, Paul Bettany said in an interview that the reason he plays Vision is because, like, he was playing Jarvis in the Iron Man movies, and then he was, like, going to retire from acting he was like i feel like like my career is not really going anywhere whatever and then they got him they gave him the call and they were like hey like we're thinking of turning jarvis into vision you want to be vision <laughs> and he's like i <laughs> i bet like and he's like paul is back uh, in the game baby <laughs> but the way they made it appear in the show is that Ag agatha did reassemble the original body of vision no yeah, and that uh, like mid credit scene. No, she's she's that's that's fake vision. Tyler the so yeah. uh, sword put together white vision using the drone that right, but we're picked out of the hex. So they built, they rebuilt. No, he they didn't. had his, they had his body. Agatha did it. No, in the mid credit scene, it was Agatha that reassembled the original body of Vision. That's not no. <laughs> I, I, yeah, scene. because that's why the white that's why white vision like attacked red vision. He attacks red vision because Tyler Hayward's controlling him with programming. Like sword. You know, the the secret division. Leave it in the comments. Who what is I'm pretty what sure is that's the real no, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. She's not nothing to do with new vision. She's messing, she's been messing with she's messing with everything fake else. Vision. Um, you're right. You're right. Funny thing. Okay, here's my question for you guys. What did you think? Well, hold about... on. Wait. Before you move on. Speaking of white vision, can we talk about how white Paul Bettany's teeth looked when he was in the vision? <laughs> yeah. Like, like that man has been brushing with Colgate ever since he became Vision. <laughs> Every. I don't think that's actually. Uh, like... It's probably not actually his teeth, but they look good though. <laughs> did they? Funny. They did not. They looked <laughs> like it was a little weird. The all white too, because he. Look like he got. Have you ever seen something just like badly painted? Yes. Like you can see the color still sleep sleeping through the walls. That's what it looked like with White Vision. He didn't actually look like what he looked like. Somebody just bad like one layer of primer, and the boy needed to. I wanted a joke where Vision like re releases uh, White Vision's memories, and then White Vision's like, they whitewash me. They did this to me. I was all color, baby. Look at me. I'm red, yellow, and green. They did this. Why would they do this to me? Yeah, I mean, they took away. Well, that's why he, red. that's the real reason he, he left. Was, He's he like, was, nah, I got to fix this. I got to get my black back. <laughs> he he was red, out. blue, and what the yellow. Hey, like, don't get me wrong. Vision is what people red. say. Vision is what people point to when people say, I. I don't see color. I don't. I don't care if you're black, white, red, blue, or green. They're talking about vision. You know what? It'd be really funny is if he goes back to Wakanda to Shuri. He's like, "Look, this is the blackest place I know to go. Look, fix me. Put the color back in. <laughs> you got vibranium. What? You could do it. Fix me." <laughs> like white actor playing a red dude <laughs> turned whiter. Like she's nowhere near the black tone you are feeling right now. I get it, and I support it. <laughs> Um, Wrong I, tone. I think you'd be using for him. I was, <laughs> I was gonna ask what you guys thought about uh, Monica Rambeau because uh, that's the one tie into another Marvel movie that is really cool in this, where she's the little girl from Captain Marvel, all grown up, and her mm -hmm. story with the uh, with the snap in Episode Four was like 
Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, when they when they uh because that was when we saw her in the in the hospital, that was our first moment, one of our first moments that was not in the sitcom world. Mm-hmm. And it was really cool to see that. And that episode basically was dedicated to her, like that whole to her like backstory. Yeah, it was closer to her story than going on Wanda. with Wanda's. Right. And I thought that was I thought that was cool to see. Um, and it was cool to to see her go from, you know, this character in episode two who you see in the background in this black and white um TV show, and then go to her, you know, trying to uh having having this like emotional connection to Wanda and trying to stop her from creating more havoc than she had already created. And I thought her entire arc was was pretty good. It, 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 in the end, I felt like she kind of got lost in the in in the background. A they little didn't bit. really know what they wanted to do with her. Yeah, uh, they knew they wanted to make her Photon, which is her superhero name in the comics. In fact, she was Captain Marvel for a while in the comics too. Okay, was um, that the so that was a reference when um when he came when uh I don't when the woman the um what are they called the people who morph scroll. Yeah, the scroll lady. Squirrel. Yes, scroll. Yes. Um, when she came and said, "Hey, he wants to meet you in outer space," basically. Yeah, she uh, the old friend she's referring to, I assume, is either Captain Marvel or the like scroll leader guy um, from okay. Captain Marvel. Either uh, Talos, I think his name was. Um, so she's referring to either one of those two people. I think it's probably Talos because they can afford to get Ben Middles Ben Mendelsohn to be in a show. I don't think they could afford Brie Larson to be in a show for yeah. like just a cameo. Never um, know. I mean, they probably could. They got I Disney mean, money. Like so. every they, yeah, they, that comes down to it. Not only do they have Marvel money, they got Disney money now. Yeah. yeah. So they so, could. Like, um, but Alex, what did you think about? Monica? But but Disney Disney parks have been closed for a minute, so. I don't know. They, they got might movies. Not, might They'll not be, be fine. Fun. Yeah, they got they got Disney Plus. They're doing the premium streaming for thirty dollars. Yeah, let us know for like ten or something. They did straight thirty. Uh, I liked her. I like when she came up. Um, I was a little disappointed with her lack of fight scene in nearing the end. Mm. I think it, there was just much more potential. And I think she would have been a better breakthrough to Wanda than, yeah, Agnes having to force her being like, yeah, you're going to experience so I can just see what's going on and I can take it. I would have liked I, that better. I, I feel like better. there could have been that, that you know, that moment where Wanda really wants to hurt her, like wants to kill her, but can't because she basically sees the same thing because there's that moment uh, where she was throwing her I think against a street lamp or something and when she drops her you see that surge of power that goes through her Mm -hmm. and it's like blue the opposite almost showing this like calming power compared to Wanda's chaotic redness going on I think that was a nice like kind of reflection that look I'm not the enemy we have the same power I'm just throwing her like a cooling effect I could I think she just could have been a bigger character and I feel like they kind of wasted it yeah, hopefully I, we see her more, but I feel like in I hope so. She I felt like she was a little wasted. They could have done so much more with her. I hope we do see Monica more. Uh she doesn't really do much in the comics. <laughs> um uh she's Captain Marvel for a while and then eventually Carol Danvers becomes Captain Marvel, and so that that becomes that. And Monica's just relegated to the background at that point. Um, but I, I think because she's in this show, we'll probably see more of her in the comics. I'm sure that's kind of how Marvel's operating these days is anyone who's famous in the movies. All right, now we're going to make a comic with that character now, because, you know, so people aren't confused, even though their history is completely different. And if you read this comic book, you will be lost because they will be referencing characters you do not know. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Well, I mean, think about it. All the people who are watching the movies and shows, not knowing anything about the characters are like, oh, I want to look at the character. I want to start reading the books. I mean, it's the same way with books, too. They have, there's a movie and book. You really love it. You go read the book and you're like, they're missing everything. Right. But at least like a novel, I can say a novel has like, especially like normally most novel series have a very short amount. Like even Harry Potter has eight books. You can get through eight books. Comic try books to are read, pretty much endless. Right, try to read all of Batman. That's like, 
days that's, worth of like, reading. Comic books <laughs> can impossible. also comic books can also do that to themselves. I mean, how many how many different you know <laughs> Captain Marvels are there? There's like two, right? And then there's technically there, technically somebody three. Else, yeah, somebody else three. took over like a male Captain, Captain Marvel. America. Yeah, there's been multiple yeah. Captain America. Somebody took over Captain America spot. It was like Bucky, right? Or Bucky and Falcon. They both Falcon? Captain America. Right. So there's three. Yeah. So comic books do it to themselves too. So if there's like all of a sudden a change after a movie, people just get upset because it's a change from the movie. We all have made ridiculous switches. And that's why we have so many different series. Well, you can't read that. That's because the movies because are it playing. doesn't go timeline with that series. You have to watch yeah. this. You have to read this series of comics, read that series of comics that have nothing to do with this character, <laughs> but you'll totally get yeah. the background of this other character when they rejoin in this series. It's like, really, dude? Well, that's because Homework. comics, like the movies are doing catch up. Like the comics have done decades worth of stories. So they've done a lot of these ideas that you think are fresh because they're happening in the movies. But the reality is they're old ideas from older comic books that they're just now putting into movie form. Um, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, I like Monica. I think she'd be great. I think Tiana Paris, I'm glad to see her in more stuff and see her in, in something that's like really What else big. has she been in? She's been in a lot of small time stuff. She's been in Chirac. I've, I feel like um, I've seen her before. Hold on, I'm looking at her INDB. I got her. She's been in a couple people. different things. If Neil yeah. Street could talk. Oh, she was in there? Yeah, she was I in Dear White People remember. as uh, I think she was as yeah, she was Coco. Hey, oh, she's, she's gonna, gonna be, be in Candy, Candy, Candy Man. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, she's she's uh good, but she hasn't uh she hasn't. I think probably if feels she could talk is like the biggest thing it, as far as like pop culture and that's sort yeah. Of thing. Um, so this is like a, a big step up. I hope to see her in more big budget stuff. Yes. Um, um, can can we can we quickly talk about like the sitcom aspect of the show because I was clocking and very much appreciating some of those tropes and I wrote some of them down <laughs> when she was pregnant and she was hiding the pregnancy with fruit baskets and I know in a lot of tv shows when an actress is pregnant they'll <laughs> hide her pregnancy with a fruit basket in a very conspicuous way the 90s episode where they had the lesson at the end where she was talking to some of the, where she was talking to the boys and they had the cheesy music. Um, the credits got have? me when she like puts the credits on Paul Bettany and he's just like, and they oh, were we fighting. ain't done having this conversation. Hold on, wait, you ain't gonna You're credits like, this me. This is the end. <laughs> that was great. I love these. He's, like, he's like, hold up, you ain't, are you rolling the credits on me right now? You don't roll the credits on your husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost, I almost, my urge was, I don't know if this was with anybody else, but my urge was to fast forward through some of the commercials at times. I like the commercials because the... they're, they're, they're tie-ins to Wanda's life, but also right. like really on point with like that time period. That's, no, I, those I, are I, both are really good. I, I get what you're great. saying, especially with the first one. My instinct was right away to grab the remote and being like, I don't want to listen about a toaster oven or exactly. whatever that was. I, I loved it because as soon as I hear the toaster popped and I heard the Iron Man repulsor gauntlet, like, boop, I was like, oh, I see what they're doing. I but like it's we, these are like mem these are like the parts of Wanda she doesn't want to confront. That like um, Iron Man or she didn't want to confront anything. That well, yeah, yogurt, but I was like, that's really cool. That yogurt Yo, commercial that was terrifying. the yogurt one was funny. <laughs> Of course, you it was both. It was both. It was a little... It was funny and terrifying. Because I was he like... couldn't open the yogurt so he starved. Like, That's dark. What you expect me to... I'm not buying this I'm yogurt. Sorry, like, I'm not buying this for my child. Hydra soak <laughs> bath powder. Hydra, which is the whole... Word. That one was cool. I like that, actually... that spot. Yeah, the but... The Lagos one made me laugh, where it's Lagos paper towels, and they're like, Lagos. When you when you clean up a mess that you didn't mean to make, yep. when you make a mess you didn't mean to, and I'm like, ah, oh, like Wakanda. Yeah, that still doesn't bring those Wakandans back. You still killed them, Wanda. That's yeah, <laughs> like that, and black I think people's blood is on your hands, Wakanda. You got a colored man for a husband now. You got to be thinking about these things. And I think in the scene prior, she had just done something <laughs> to to make a mess as well. So it, it was yeah, it was red juice, juice. by the way. Yeah, and it was red juice. That was also it was red on juice point. I was like, that she cool. like wiped off the table with. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh god, okay. Yeah, you're being subtle, but not. 
I love I loved trying like playing the guessing game of what sitcom she was parodying with every like I was watching it week to week, so I didn't know what what the exact sitcoms were. We had an idea of what decades they were, but I didn't know they were going to be exact references to actual like shows like they were. The, uh, oh, were yeah, they, they were di- like oh, well, the first I, one I, was I... Dick Van Dyke show. The other one was uh, the I'm... one after that was Bewitched. Then it was uh, Full House, or not Full House. Um, no, no, it was the uh, 1950s uh, was Dick Van Dyke, 1960s would have been... Be- it was Bewitched. Bewitched. And then it was the 1970s. It was All in the Brady Family, Bunch. that's what it was. All in oh, the okay. Family. All in the then, Family or Brady Yeah, Bunch? because the, yeah. the They had like the exact uh, Brady the Bunch same. stairs. They yeah. had the exact Brady Bunch stairs in their house. You cannot tell me that was anything other than Brady Bunch. It was all in the family oh, mixed, gonna, with, mixed with Brady Bunch because I I'm only gonna, say all in the family. I'm gonna go with, with Jonathan. It's I only <laughs> say it's all in the family because the opening's the exact same with the painting oh, and it, it like, okay. but it's the exact same opening from that show. That's why I say it's all in the family. And oh wait, all those shows I knew they would do Modern wait, Family for wait, the I 2010s. Got it. I knew yeah, they would do Modern The fifties was based off, but not limited to. I love Lucy, The Honeymooners. And most obvious, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. They were I mixed the, up. I love oh, Lucy and Dick Van Dyke there. himself consulted in the first two episodes. Cool. Really? Wow. Yeah. And you were right about the second one was Bewitched. That was obviously okay, was, the animated. Was, oh, was the 2000s, was the 2000s wait, wait. Uh, even Steven slash like. That's Malcolm in the middle all the way. Hold on. No the even. 70s really quick was Brady Bunch, Partridge Family, Mary Tyler Moore Show, and Courtship of Eddie's Father. All in the Family was not included in that list. It wasn't All in the Family? Was Mm-mm. it Patrick's family that I'm thinking of? I can't Maybe. Um, um, one of them had the, the same. The 80s old. one was Growing Pains, Step by Step, Family Ties, and Full House. Yeah. Mostly inspired by Family Ties. Uh, yes, family Malcolm, ties. In, the, Malcolm in the Middle and Roseanne were the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. Because it was I, the grunge I, area. Even Stevens was way more wacky than... And they didn't Malcolm talk to the camera. Middle. Malcolm in the Middle was like... No, they did. But Malcolm in the Middle Stevens, did that too. No, and even Stevens, they didn't. They didn't do that in Malcolm Middle because uh, Frankie. No, they did that in the Malcolm in the Middle. They didn't do that in Even Stevens. Yeah, that's what I was right. saying. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see what you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I got. I didn't think it was Malcolm in the Middle just because, like, maybe maybe because the kids were like younger than the Malcolm in the Middle ages, so I, I was getting more. And Malcolm in the Middle had more adult humor. So it had the same it. opening as Malcolm in the Middle. That's why I was like, it's Malcolm in the Middle. Okay. Well, it's a recreation that, like, of that opening. Well, in the early 2000s, like with Malcolm in the Middle, Modern Family, The Office, those shows where they broke the fourth wall or were talking to somebody or talking to the audience were a really popular thing. So, like, honestly, it was a big reference to just that John that time period. Well, Modern Family was the next era they did after mm-hmm. after and the office i got a little bit of the office too because the theme song uh, i the get theme why song people, was exactly the same i get why people thought the office i thought it was strictly modern family with like the picture opening like in, a, in like because the modern family is just the office but in a house as opposed to like in an office like it's the <laughs> same exact style the same type of humor same almost type of characters like it's just it's the office wasn't there house another edition. show like modern family that had that whole uh, interview that was like there's a been a few style. of them that documentary style like parks yeah. and rec mockumentary yeah. um like parks and rec the office superstore nowadays um arrested development mm-hmm. to a degree um 30 rock to a degree like, I also thought oh, it was interesting I how arrested development arrested development i got disappointed in because they like came back netflix bought them they just got boring and like gross. I also thought it was interesting how, and I don't know if this was intentional, but I caught on to it a little bit. How you had Randall Randall Park and Cat uh, Dennings, Cat Dennings, mm-hmm. and they both star in sitcoms, and they were in the more dramatic <laughs> portions of the show. But you know, and what, then though? you have Wanda and Vision, who are typically in dramatic roles and they were in the sitcom portion of the show. So you had that cross. It was, it probably wasn't intentional and I'm probably no weird for noticing Because they've it, already but... been characters in these movies before. Um, Kat yeah, Dennings and Thor, but, but, Dennings yeah. and, Thor and yeah. Jimmy Woo's oh, in, yeah, from Ant-Man right. too. But again, they played more serious characters in both those 
than no, with, they were the what, comic relief characters in both of those. But compared to their TV aspects, especially oh, yes. at Dennings, yeah, yeah. because it was a show, Two Broke Girls, she played in. Um, she was just didn't have a care in the world. And in yeah, she was a comic relief in like Thor and everything, but she also played a cl- critical role in keeping her friend alive. <laughs> Because I feel like it's the other way around. Jane pretty much kept Cat Dennings alive because she's Jane kept running into situations that she should not be running into. Yeah, but she had Thor. Like she doesn't need Cat Dennings. Thor can solve anything that Cat Dennings can handle. In Thor can punch anything. Cat Dennings cannot. And Cat Dennings can't science anything. Thor can punch. Right, (laughs) but she needs Thor. She don't need Cat Dennings. Jane couldn't like work her own damn phone in most of the in the two movies. But Kat Dennings, yeah. she's good in there. I I no, never like really me. liked her in Thor. Um, I just feel like she's kind of out of place. Most, like mostly not because she's Rude. a bad actress. I think she does a great job of what she's given. I think it's just, it's a one thing of like, well, we have to have a comic relief character. And it's like, okay, but you've made Thor a dumb idiot who tells jokes all the time. He is comic relief. You don't need two comic reliefs in the same movie. So it just feels like her character was pointless to me as like a character like her trope and reason for being there here i feel like she fits a lot better because she still gets to be like a scientist and smart because she is that's her character i think she gets but to tell show off too. her intelligence in the show because yeah they didn't give her that aspect i will say I, no matter what jimmy woo detective jimmy and woo. jimmy woo because he wasn't really an ant-man 2 a lot although he was really funny uh he didn't get he didn't yeah, have forgot about was, him he was like a fan. He was at the beginning and at the end. And he was never, I, lo- I just love the scene where Paul Rudd's like, oh, we should hang out. He's like, really? Did you mean it? Like, we should go out, like, hang out, like, we're friends. Like, he was so into that idea. And I, I love like, the, I love I the love when it. he meets Monica. And because, like, throughout Ant Man 2, he's like asking Paul Rudd, like, how'd you do that magic trick? And so the oh, yeah, the he's trying to do it. And then when he meets Monica, he's got it. He's figured out how to do the magic trick and he brings yeah. his card out. I was like, oh, he's got the magic trick. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. that. I was super proud. <laughs> that was he's like, that's like cool. yeah, he kept doing this, trying to do a sleight of hand. And I was like, oh, impressive. He got it. Yeah. yeah so I was like, you know, look. their inclusion was really great. And it was a ray of sunshine, really, because the human stuff outside of the show could be dark and sad. And so it was nice to have Jimmy Woo and Kat and uh, Darcy, well, played by Cat Dennings, be like these two characters, kind of keep things light in the in those moments too. While you also have the sitcom stuff happening with Wanda and Vision going on. Well, they made it show that it was really like night and day what was going on because anytime you really were in Wanda Vision, it was daytime, very rarely night unless she was putting the kids to bed or something like that. And anytime you really went out into the real world, it was always nighttime or they were in the facility or, you know, a darkened space. So I think they did well to show you how you were going splitting between the two worlds with at least the lighting. But I do mm-hmm. agree that they kept, who, who were the two comic reliefs in the earlier movies? I think they allowed them to grow and show that they're not just big jokes because again, they became fan favorites so quickly. And this was able to show that they were actually intelligent characters as well. They were goofy. They were very, very smart and very dedicated to their job, especially Jimmy Woo. Again, yeah, Jimmy gets to actually have a fight scene in this. Him and Monica kick butt. Like so, Alex, like, on your forehead, it should say Jimmy Woo stand account. <laughs> and uh, I'll have Paul Bettany stand account. The last hey, thing I wanted to Charles? mention before we end this is, and this is this is my opinion. I want to know what you guys think about this. I think the weakest part of the show also passed just for me personally, them not really tackling Wanda's stuff too well, is the villains. Both of them are the weakest part of this movie, and oh. I almost wish they weren't yeah. around. Both yeah. Agatha and Tyler. They, <laughs> I feel like I, Tyler. Agatha I, has a point to being in this story. Tyler me, is unnecessary. <laughs> I say leave Agatha alone. She she did well with the part she was given. One great actress. Her name is uh, Catherine. Oh yeah, Catherine Hahn is her name. I just yeah, she great. fit that role perfectly. She fits that role, yeah. And honestly, she like she wasn't necessarily a villain. She just wanted to know how Wanda created the chaotic magic. So she wasn't trying to hurt Wanda. She just well, wanted to know. Well, yeah, she, maybe the well, she, 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 she was, was wanted to do bad with it. But yeah, my question was, what was she trying to have her? She never made it clear 
what she wanted Wanda to do with the magic. That's what I. Me. That's why I say she was a weak she villain. Wanted, well, she wanted to steal the magic. A weak antagonist. She's like because it's not until the last episode you even know what she wants. Because at first it's like she just wants to know how Wanda did it. Then it's well, I want to see how powerful you are. And then at the end of the last episode, she's like, actually, I want the power. And you're like, Jesus, lady, make up your mind. Like, what do you want? <laughs> well, I mean, I could, I could see that. You see how the power is created. All right, I can do that. How far can this go? Oh, really? It can go that big? Well, now I want it all. I mean, that's the progressive nature. It's just not trying but to But if itself. she just wanted the power, why didn't she just absorb her in the beginning? Because she didn't know how powerful she was. But she doesn't because have to. Remember, she absorbed she... her mom and all those witches in the coven without, like, right, they didn't have to show her it... her power. She just absorbed it and just, like, took it. Right, but Wanda could have had like a defense mechanism. That's the whole thing. Wanda was be able to create this whole bubble and slay a bunch of people without even her realizing it. Think about what she would have tried to do in defense if somebody's trying to absorb her. Mm, she true. could have imploded Agatha. And I think Agatha was smart. She watched, you know, you don't, if you can, because she's also magic herself. So she's sensing this girl's power. She doesn't realize how powerful it is, but she can sense the strength and power in her. So it's like, oh, I have to be careful of that one. It's like with the same crap of uh, well, Voldemort and Harry Potter, right? He hmm. tried to kill Harry Potter and Harry Potter did like a defense. I, I don't know Harry Potter that well, but I'm assuming that's what it was. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong person. I've never, I don't know anything about it. No, I'm okay. not a, nerd, uh, dumb, uh, I am not a... <laughs> Okay, so. I, although with, with, the, Tyler, on there. with, the, with the Hayward thing, I liked the idea of you know him wanting to destroy the whole thing because it, it felt like it was a impending threat that was serious and dangerous. However, the actual person who was behind the threat, first of all, we didn't really see him that much. Second of all, maybe they, I feel maybe they could have found a more imposing looking person. I felt like he was not, um, the the actor no no offense to the actor because he did he did a good job with what he was given but maybe they could have found someone who who was maybe a little more opposing that maybe you could have been more afraid of i think he was and, just underwritten like he just goes from all right we're here to save these people to i want to kill wanda that's all i want that's all i need like and it's whoa. just like whoa 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 dude like I, two like i thought you were about the civilians like what is going on and i feel like it's because they were they realized we have nine episodes we want to fill a lot of that time at Wanda and Vision, but we also want this guy to be a bad guy. So I guess he's just going to be stereotypical government man <laughs> who's who was bad. I we will just... say I don't think they were the weakest points in the story. One, I do love Agatha. Two, yeah, <laughs> Hayward was kind of weird. It feels like they were trying to force him in there. Agatha was at they least fun. Her. Yeah, I'll give you she that. Was fun. Agatha she... was fun, so it, it made it. And nice she to felt have her really own. into like the evil witch aspect too. Like, I could see her cackling. One, the actress, totally a cackler. Yeah. Totally see her doing well, that on a Because she played um, Doc Ock in Spider Man uh, Into the Spider Verse. So, Catherine That's Han fine. has played a villain before. She's really good at it. So, I want to see her play she more villains. Yeah. Um, I think the weakest point that we haven't even talked about, and really there's not much to talk about, was Evan Peters being brought in yeah. and given the name Ralph Boner. I think I think his whole thing because here's the here's the thing. I Disney thought that was did, a fun I, twist. I, well, Disney did it because they wanted to they wanted to throw people off because he plays Quicksilver in the X Men movies, and so him being in this show, people like and immediately they did exactly what I'm sure Disney thought they were going to do. <gasps> is X Men now a part of the Marvel universe? Oh snap! Let me tell you how Quicksilver is like totally been roped in. Here's my theory, and then. Disney was sitting on their hands like, you idiots. We got you. We got you to watch the next episode. He's not a part of the universe, you dummies. Yeah, but that just pissed everybody <laughs> off. And, and then that's, that's what made me laugh. I was like, you but, but idiots. Look, if they ever want to bring back in Quicksilver or bring in uh, her brother at all, now they can't because now all we think is, well, who's just Ralph Boner? <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be Evan Peters anyway. We already have a Quicksilver for this universe. Why would they bring in one from a universe they plan on not using ever again? Dark because Phoenix is the last extra movie. Marvel, they don't Period. make sense. Oh, well, and another trope, bringing in the special guest star. How yeah. they brought him in. He was brought in as the special guest star. You recast him? That trope in the 90s when they would just... 
Yeah, Aunt Viv. Cast. Light skin aren't Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Viv. Viv. Yeah. Dark skin Aunt Viv. <laughs> they did that to Lily on Modern Family. They just replaced the kid mm-hmm. with another little <laughs> Asian girl. And they're like, nobody will uh, notice. What was it? Raven Simone replaced a kid too. Was it, wasn't it? Um, uh, she replaced somebody on a sitcom. Oh, uh, in the Cosby show. Yes. But she didn't she replace didn't, anybody. She or no, she didn't replace anybody. Character. She was just a new kid. There was another yes, they one. They wanted a new Rudy. They wanted a new yeah. Rudy. Yeah. I but think like, Rudy was there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Rudy got less and less. Well, no, they did it on uh, the Brady Bunch. One of the little brothers disappeared and then they got Cousin Oliver. Um, they always but, brought in the cousin. Yeah. To push out the other characters. But um, I just, uh, yeah, I, I will agree with you. Agatha's fun. So she's cool. However, yeah, the whole Pietro thing, he was unnecessary. I think it was just to like throw people off fan theory, which people, let me tell you something about, this is the one thing I do hate about nerd culture. Y'all are so like, and not you two, I'm talking to the audience. Y'all are so impatient for real because y'all. everybody, no, not you, Jonathan, you're good. And you I Alex. said he's talking to y'all. No, no, no. I'm talking about y'all, but the audience. Anyway, get your point out. They're a community for real. Y'all are impatient as hell because this was annoying to see every week. How is this Mephisto? How is Mephisto's involved? I'm just like, Mephisto, the devil? You think this is the devil? Out of all the theories, immediately y'all have jumped to Satan's involved, which Mephisto isn't Satan. Satan does exist in the Marvel Universe. I know that. But what I'm saying is, is that annoyed the heck out of me? Because I'm Hold like, on. there's a thousand real, real characters. Quick. Satan is Satan be, is a part of the. There is a like, there's Satan like a thousand thing? devils in the Marvel universe. Right, but is it like one the of devils them is, or like? Is I think it one of them Satan? is officially Satan, but he doesn't show up really. Mephisto likes to pretend to be the devil, but he's not really the devil, but he's got like the same powers kind of the devil. He makes a lot of deals. He makes ghost riders. That's his thing. Anyway, he is. And on that being. note of Jerome's yeah, devil. I'm rant. just saying y'all need Let's... to stop. Let the shows be the shows. All right. That's all I'm saying. Let these people write. Let these people write. All right. That's my Okay. Point. Let's get into <laughs> that's our, our argument. Brief, let's, <laughs> let's get into our um, brief final thoughts of what we thought of WandaVision. Now that we've talked about it, we've chatted about it, maybe we've given it I feel like I, uh, I feel like I want to do like another video where I elaborate a little bit on my points a little bit because I, I, you're right. We need to keep this under an hour, but I do have we'll some more stuff to say and I want to bring you all with me. Uh, to, to talk about Tell it. you what, we'll give you a vlog episode where we just argue about Marvel. Yes. Oh, no, I just, I just feel like there's some cool stuff we can still talk about about WandaVision. A lot of cool stuff oh, happens yeah. in this show, so I feel like we could have like a part two. That could be a vlog if you would like. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But Jerome, your grade and um, yes, your grade and why? Uh, uh, I think for me though, this show, despite my issues with the show, I think it still gets um from me a b uh i think it's like i think you know it's not a bad show by any means i did enjoy it i had fun watching it i just think it's it's the same thing i felt about dr strange where in the comics dr strange and he first starts out is this surgeon who is an expert in his craft unmatched and he refuses to help people even though he's a doctor because it won't make him famous. If this person won't make me famous, I'm not gonna help them. And that is a complex idea to see that person become selfless entirely and give up everything to be a protector of not just the world, the universe. And when they made the movie, they didn't wanna go that far because Disney wanna, didn't wanna make you not like him. They didn't wanna risk it. And I feel like it's the same thing with this show is that they do try to tackle some complex ideas, but Wanda does something here that is very hard to forgive for me personally. She enslaves a whole town of people and her punishment for it is, well, she gave up her family and it's like, yeah, but that doesn't eradicate the agony and pain these people went through and she hasn't even apologized for it. She just leaves. So, and there's, and there's other aspects to that on top of that. I won't get into because I'm doing a wrap up final thoughts. But I say that to say that, you know, I feel like there's some more complexity. There's more meat on the bone they could have done with this show. And I know it was only nine episodes, so you can only do but so much. And you want to add action and comedy and all the other characters. But at the end of the day, this is Wanda's story. 
you know? And I feel like they could have dived deeper into her grief, but also into her actions and her acknowledgement of them and her acknowledgement of her grief and had given her a lot more of control of those things as opposed to being forced to face them in the last few episodes. And then it's like, all right, well, I guess I'm out. I got a new costume and new power. See you guys in the next movie. And I'm like, Can't, I feel like we still have some stuff to deal with here first before we get to Doctor Strange 2. But like I said, it still was a good time. Vision was great. Kat Dennings and uh, Randall Park, hilarious. Tayona Park, uh, or Tayana Park, I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Great as Monica Tiana Rainbow. Paris. Hope to see Tiana her. Paris. Uh, Tiana Paris, thank you. I'm sorry. Missing her with Randall Park. Tiana Paris, uh, hope to see her in more stuff, more Marvel stuff as Monica Rambeau. And hope to see Vision again, Vision and Wanda. Um, I think all the actors are great. I hope to see all of them in more Marvel properties. Uh, but yeah. That's just my, that's my thoughts. Alex, your grade and reason. I would probably say a C. Be, not because I didn't like it. I think they, they could have done a little bit better. And I get what the sitcom part was supposed to be about, but I feel like to cover the decades where sitcoms were so popular, they ended up losing time on explaining stuff and then dealing with things. And the shift in characters and how they acted and what they were doing kind of got like sped up because they, you're right, they only had nine episodes. I do hope this is a introduction way to doing intros to characters instead of having whole movies for them. Kind of like with Ant-Man, his movies were kind of intro movies into him and why he was in, uh, you know, so Civil War, and that's and the Avengers. Um, I think I would have enjoyed Ant-Man more as a series. And I think Marvel has now the opportunity to do these mini series for characters if they don't want to do such a big production, you know, they don't want to have the Marvel movie part of it for these miniature, not miniature, but you know, these smaller uh characters. characters that they haven't placed out yet or they can even use these as like testers and see how like they people feel i do get uh, another reason i give it a c is because you're right she doesn't have any consequences for her action and you're made to feel bad for her when she has to give up her family but she just brainwashed the whole town to force them into going with what she wanted and honestly does she need the town for the children that was my he, thought too. I was like, if, okay, she, you can let them go and then just have your family. You don't need because, them yeah, to be here. Because like, I got that because in the end, she's hearing her the twins cry and everything. And I'm like, technically you have the power to brainwash the whole town and trap them in this little bubble. Couldn't you just like, I don't know, find a farm somewhere, create a little bubble for you and the twins in the vision? Like you didn't need to like clamp everybody in there because anytime somebody came around, she got suspicious of them anyway. She didn't like them. She watched them from the corner of her eye, so it wasn't like a big deal if you have people around you or not. You could become a farmer with vision, raise some cows. Uh, and I think th that was stupid what they did with Evan Peters. I think the whole character thing was stupid, and I didn't like because it wasn't a recast. It was just like, yeah, it was like Disney that. Yes, that was a it was Disney trolling. Yeah, yeah. And I was like <laughs> no, I wasn't for any of that. Again, Brando Parks, love him. He's I stand with him and everything so he was my favorite so i like to see i think it's fun and i think it's great to watch and i think it's something that's an entertain it's an entertaining show but i think they did wanda dirty in the end and wanda kind of did everybody else dirty in the end the end wasn't satisfying enough to where uh for the higher b for me funny enough they did do it the creators did do an interview and said that they thought people would be disappointed I think yeah. it's because they were reading everyone's theories for what they thought the season finale was going to be. It's and like, I get why they didn't go so big because a lot of the theories that people put on for the show could be placed in movies. Like I they said, were like, the devil. Yeah, or <laughs> they were like bringing in characters that have yet to be introduced into the Marvel world, but were too big yet or with X-Men or stuff like that. And like, so they were creating their own, but it was more so that like things were left incomplete in ways that could have been completed before we went into her basically getting ready to be hanging out with Dr. Strange. Yeah. So. 
Um, Jonathan? Yes. Uh, and quick note, um, Alex, you said this is probably a way, like a lower budget, rather, like a, a, a more introductory way to introduce um, characters in having a movie. Yeah. I just looked it up and the budget for each episode of WandaVision was reported to be as much as $25 million with a total budget of $225 million for the entire season. Oh, but that's... That's standard. That's like small for like That's standard, but, yeah. But Ant Man for like a Mar Ant Man cost a hundred and eighty million dollars to make and Ant Man two cost a hundred and ninety five million dollars to make. So that's more than the Ant Man's True, really? but those are sh- those are movies. They're only two hours. This is not this is about like three or four. So it right. probably costs a lot more to keep for upkeep, keeping those sets, paying for actors. Like they have, they have more more stuff to pay for. Right, but for overall, longer. it did cost more to make this. It did. Uh, no, I'm not saying it, it did. But I wasn't I'm just talking saying about like money wise. I was just saying it was like, I feel like it's just a lower like introduction form. Not like money wise. It's more like people are more likely to watch a series at home and then, then make it out. Cause nobody really watched Ant-Man in theaters. It's expectations. Yeah. yeah. And for Wanda, you can say you would maybe go see a movie of her. Just like a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, I want a black widow movie. I want a black widow movie. I predict that movie is actually going to bomb pretty bad. I don't because think it's, it's, I think I it think is black widows fleshed out enough as a per, as a character in the, in the comics or the movie. Like she's, she's, Every Russian I think spy movie you've ever focus, seen ever in a movie. Scarlett Johansson has. I think if they focus on like the really younger years with the ballet and like her actually being young, but it's going to be a Scarlett Johansson Russian spy movie, and this is what that's going to happen. You've had Salt, you've had Red Sparrow, you've had a thousand of these Russian girl movies where she did ballet in her past, and now she's using sex and seduction to do her spy work, but she also knows kung fu. That's Black Widow movie. That's what it's going to be. I mean, Russian ballet is terrifying. Though. I... Either way, we'll be here to do a review of it. That's true. And... We are reviewing it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, Jonathan, what, what, bad, what was your... The... Wait, what was your grading? What was your thoughts? So my rating is... I'm going to have to um, go with a B as well. And the reason for that is... Uh, first of all, don't judge me in relationship to my Malcolm and Marie review. I'm rethinking things. I'm reexamining my life. Are you doing yes, a, are you doing a, an addendum on your Malcolm and Marie review? I no, mean, you did for no one. one. I remember you did. And I said but, it wasn't allowed. Stop doing that, guys. No, <laughs> addendums stick are to important. It. No, right, we stick let people to it. Know. Sometimes people now, every time I do, now every time I do a grading, I'm like, oh, dang, I'm, I'm grading this, <laughs> that it, in relation to the Malcolm and Marie review. But anyway, I'll, 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 no, I'll stick with it that on your own. What do you think from your enjoyment's perspective? Yeah. What do you think about the show? The show, this show or Malcolm and Marie? No, anyway. this show. Um, this show. Well, we're podcasting about. No, I do think it is a B because I do like the, um, like I said at the beginning, I like the cross genre of things. I like that they were able to add elements of other genres and add them into this superhero universe. It stands out, it makes it more memorable, it makes it funnier, it gives it more heart. Uh, literally, because sitcoms, you know, they, they like to, to bring out the gushing moments and, and they definitely brought those out in this. I like the relationship between Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen, which by the way, if you did not know that Elizabeth Olsen was related to uh, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. She literally looks like them and has the same last name. That was apparently trending last week on social media. A lot of people I mean, did not know. Are you know. serious? Yes, a lot Jonathan, of people do you not know. You know that there's a lot of people who don't know who actors are, right? Past their characters. Like every That's... time they see her on screen, they're like, oh, it's Scarlet Witch is in this movie. They don't even know her well, name. No, 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 not, not only that. Mm-hmm. The These Olsen people said, out... I did not know Elizabeth Olsen was related to That's Mary what I'm Kate saying. If Ashley. they don't know who the actress is, they don't know who her family is. They no, don't no, call no. out by name. Uh-uh, you giving these people too much of an excuse. Let's... Really quick, though. A lot of people don't know who King... Uh... 
Kane and Ashley Olsen are because they're like 34, but they stopped acting when they were like That's eight. true. You also got to remember, these are kids that are watching most of this, and most of yeah. them have not seen a Mary Kate and Ashley anything. So think about it. Some of the so people why would you were say I didn't bu- know Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were related to Elizabeth Olsen if you because didn't know who Mary Kate and Ashley were? That Mary Kate and Ashley are even- No, uh-uh, I'm not accepting that. Anyway, back to my. Oh, <laughs> Came with time notes. finish whatever go anyway <laughs> jerome you're gonna have to adjust the decibels for this portion because <laughs> um anyway uh yes <clears throat> i uh i liked that uh that they got their chance to shine i appreciated the the little jokes in there um and the little the, the, the nods to and homage to all of the sitcoms um of years past I I thought the the action sequences and the more dramatic parts blended in well as well. For some of the downsides, I did think it started off a little slow. I was losing interest at the beginning, and that's not really when, when you want to lose interest, especially in a show like this. But once we got to the middle, it picked up. And at the end, like we talked about, there were those moments where some of the characters kind of just dropped off. You didn't really know what was going to happen with what really happened with them or their storyline got wrapped up just because you felt like it, they needed to wrap it up and everything. But overall, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. And that's why I'm going to give it a B. Oh, and- one last thing I, I thought of, Alex, you saying this is a great way for them to introduce new characters is actually interesting because this is going to be their new way to introduce new characters because the show's way later down the line. But after this, um, Three of them are introducing new characters. It's Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, and She-Hulk. They're going to get their own shows, but not movies like people thought. I think that's better for them. If they're going to be just like this, I'm excited to see what what their shows are going to be. It also works out a little bit better because we're still in a pandemic. We're still doing all this through video chat and everything like that. So the likelihood of theaters opening up, you know, with us having the vaccine or not, it's still kind of slim, and honestly, with the way we used to clean the theater, the way I used to clean the theater, speak for yourself. I used to clean up. Yeah. Right. Look, I got everybody in their seats on time. That's what anybody cared about. Uh, is not a thing I would want. So this is also a nice way for Marvel to still have the TV shows because when they did it on like ABC, NBC, and stuff like that, it bombed. They did not do good with like Shield started off in good, humans. and then. Yeah, and he, well, the humans was trash. <laughs> like they didn't even get it. I love that every. I did they no, they didn't even finish their first season. I love that everybody walked out of that theater shaking their head. Um, but it seems this is a little bit better <laughs> with it, and I, I, I really love that. And I think just with people will feel safer being able to watch this from their home. Disney's not putting that weird Prime on it where it's like thirty bucks. And it's also, you get a bit more and that's what people want. It's like, oh, I get a little series. I get like the nine episodes, the nine weeks. It gets to stretch out because we're all still stuck at home. Mm -hmm. This way people get to like be into it a little bit longer than, yeah, I saw that movie last week or this or that. Or like now you get to continuously talk about it for a little bit longer and be like, oh yeah, I can't wait for the next episode to come out. Or like, I'm a little bored, but I want to see where they're going with this character. And this is a way to hold them in with that. And they have a bigger budget with streaming because on TV broadcast, they don't typically TV shows that are on broadcast television don't get that big of a budget. Yeah. And you could tell sure? with like agents. Yeah, you could tell, you tell with the quality Shields. of agents of shields versus this in that there's a huge. Difference. Oh yeah. Like I will this say this is shield. This is a DC, but with flash, the first couple seasons, they stayed in like two main areas and like you saw the same building. But when they grew in popularity, their budget blew up and suddenly they got a fancy new lab, all this stuff, <laughs> all this big equipment and things. And it's like, yeah, where was this when he was training? Really <laughs> I especially and the thing too is that uh, I, I'm curious to get you guys' perspective on this because you binged it. I watched it week to week. I personally think though this show works better because it's when you binge it. It feels like it's written to be binged because the episodes are so short. And it's like, I feel like this show works when you binge it as opposed to what trying to watch. I know they released it week to week because like they tried to do like Mandalorian essentially, but Mandalorian is episodic. Every episode is kind of its own contained story. This is a long story drawn out in separate episodes. 
So what do you guys, do you guys think, you, did you have a better experience binging it than you think you would have watching it week to week? I don't probably. think I thought about it, honestly. Yeah, um, I probably maybe did because I feel like if I watched it week to week, I would have either one, forgotten about it, two, well, I can't really forget about it because it's all over Twitter, but I, if, if it wasn't all over Twitter, I would have probably forgotten about it. Or two, I would have been like, uh, the first few episodes are not really piquing my interest too much. So I don't know if I'm going to watch the next one. Hmm. So yeah, in that sense, binging, it's like, okay, let me watch these first two episodes, even though these first two episodes didn't hit, let me watch this third one just to make sure. And then, so you watch the third one and then you're like, oh, cool. So I'll watch, I'll keep watching. If, it, if I had that experience watching week to week, I might not have finished it. Which is funny because when they released this early for the reviewers, when they released it, they released it for the first two episodes for the public. But all the reviewers were raving about it. They were like, oh, this show is great. I can't wait to see the next episode. And the reason why is because they really gave them the first three. <laughs> um... And I was like, oh, so you gave them like, you gave them the first three because you knew that your first two episodes were not going to hook anybody to want to watch the rest of the show. <laughs> like that. Oh. That's kind of weird, Disney. Yeah, that's because, the, especially because the first two episodes were basically just the, the sitcom, sitcom with like yeah. teeny little hints. Which I assume that's what it was going to be the entire time, honestly. That's what I thought was gauging and that we discovered it's really her mental breakdown, but then it turned into more things. But anyway, we need to. Yeah, let's, let's, but yeah, uh, let's that's give a, out that's our social information. That. Social um, stuff. Alex, where can people find you at? Uh, mainly on my Instagram, Alex and Nobody, and I handle the podcast's TikTok account, which is the first ones to die. What about nice. you, Jonathan? Where can we find you? You can find me at Jonathan Keys on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you fancy. And Jerome, what about you? You can find me at not Jerome Rhett on Instagram and also at RoboZoo Media on Instagram as well. And uh, yeah. And you can find us at the first ones to die on social platforms, whatever you fancy. Email us first ones to die at gmail.com. Uh, we'll see you next week. Next oh, week. Well, we're... also, what did you guys think about WandaVision? Feel free to email us. We'd love yeah. to hear what y'all thought about WandaVision. Or did you like it? Did you not like, like it? YouTube or Instagram, interact with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's. We got nothing going down. on. We got nothing going on besides this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least I don't. Let's have a dialogue. Yeah. Um, next week, we will be having a very um, important dialogue um, about mental health. So that should be uh, really interesting. I'm very excited about that. And we're also going to be having a special guest. So tune in for that. And we will see you all next week. I told you this was going to be less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hehehehe <laughs>